Hello, I'm so happy to see you again in the session of Management Accounting for the subtopic of Cost Behavior. I'm Evony, so enjoy the lecture. Okay, our learning objective for this sub, uh, uh, subsection is the linear cost function and the behavior. The second, we will see the importance of causality in estimating cost function. We will also, in the third part, our, uh, 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 learning about the various methods we can use to estimate costs. The last, we try to estimate cost function using quantitative analysis. Let's see first the cost function definition. Cost function can be said as mathematical description of how a cost changes with the changes in the level of an activity relating to that cost. In other words, we see how cost changes uh, based on the change in the cost driver. When we make a linear cost function, we have to use two uh, cost driver, uh, sorry, two uh, assumption. The first one is that we only use one cost driver and the second, we uh, see that the cost behavior is approximated linear within the relevant range. We can divide cost into three types. The first one is variable costs. Variable cost is the cost that changes in total in relation to level of activity or output. For example, direct material. Let's say we have to use two meters square of wood, for example, to produce a table. Yeah. So when we produce one table, we need two meters squares. We need to, 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 to spend two meters square of wood. If we add another unit, we need another two meters square of wood. It means that the total cost will be twice as much as one unit. Yeah, and so on. So every unit we increase, the um, total variable cost will increase for another uh, two meter squares. Yeah, and another example is the direct labor. Let's say we pay one uh, hundred dollar to produce one uh, product. Yeah. So when we uh, uh, produce one product, we have to spend one hundred dollar. When if when we produce another one unit, we have to spend another one hundred dollar. So uh, the direct material, uh, the direct labor cost will increase as the uh, direct lab, uh, direct la uh, uh, sorry as the unit produce increases as well. The second one is the fixed cost. Fixed cost is the cost that do not change in total in the relation to level of activity or output. It means that if we add the activity, if we add the output produce, the fixed cost will not change. It stay constant. It stay the same. Yeah. But there is a uh, um, we have to consider that it, it is only for a relevant range. Yeah, the relevant range is usually using the capacity. So as long as we are in the uh, same capacity, so the total fixed cost will the same. For example, uh, the supervisor. The supervisor is controlling uh, uh, the workers. So if uh, the workers uh, producing, let's say, 10, uh, 10 uh, units, yeah, or the workers are producing 20 units or 30 units, maybe we still just need one supervisor. So the supervisor, because uh, he or she is paid based on a monthly basis, the cost of the supervisor will not change even though the unit we produce is changing. 10, 20, 30, uh, the supervisor cost is still the same. The third one is mixed cost. Mixed cost is the cost that consists of variable cost as well as fixed costs. Yeah. So uh, if the cost that should be paid in uh, a particular amount, no matter how much we uh, produce, let's say until uh, 50 units, yeah, as long as we still produce uh, 50 units or below yeah, or less, we only pay a particular amount of money. But if we add another unit, then we add another cost. So it is the variable part of the mixed costs. 
if we see the cost behavior in the graph so we can see here that the fixed cost in total is the same no matter no matter how many units we are producing but the unit cost is decreasing the higher we produce yeah, the lower the variable cost per unit because the same uh, amount of money yeah the same amount of cost is uh, spread into the uh, more products variable cost is uh, constant in uh, unit level so variable cost per unit is constant but once we add uh, the unit we produce the total cost is increasing proportionately of course so let's see now the uh, linear fun cost function if we see the uh, uh, quotation of uh, cost function as another linear cost uh, as another linear function mathematical function uh, we use this term y is a plus b times x or y is the dependent variable is intercept plus the slope of the uh, line yeah, times the uh, independent variables and if we put the analogies to uh, uh, cost function the dependent variable is the total cost yeah, the cost that we are uh, estimating uh, the constant is the fixed cost and the slope is the variable cost per unit sorry this is the variable cost per unit times the cost driver yeah the cost driver is the deep independent variable so we can see here that the cost driver is the uh, determinant of the uh, total cost so cost driver is very important in a uh, linear fun cost function yeah cost driver uh, can be said as a structural determinant of cost of an activity so the more the activity we are doing the more the cost is yeah so we can also say that the cost driver reflects cost and effect relationship between the level of an activity and the cost related to that level of an activity and in the identifying cost driver is very important because by by identifying cost driver the managers uh, has insight yeah uh, the way uh, to reduce the cost or to do to or to um, um, uh, apply a efficiency uh, strategy here the example of the cost driver of the activities like let's say the activities is uh, sorry this is the costs let's say the cost is the machine set up costs so the cost driver is usually set up hours the longer the the time we need to set up the machine the higher the cost so the set up hours will be the cost driver transportation or distribution uh, distance is usually uh, uh, one of the driver that we can use sometimes volume sometimes weight sometimes we co the combination of uh, some of them like the volume maybe uh, we need uh, one truck can be loaded for let's say 10 meters uh, cubic so if we send let's say 20 meter cubic we need to use two trucks means the higher the cost is or sometimes weight if we send uh, the product using um, what is it the uh, uh, cargo for example so the more uh, the, the 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 more uh, the weight of the uh, product we send so the more we are charged for the transportation or distribution uh, costs direct labor uh, usually driven by uh, direct labor hours the more the labor hour, uh, the labor are working the more we pay them this is for the case that we pay the labor based on the hour basis but if we pay them uh, on the unit basis or the more they produce the uh, product the the more we pay them so if this is the case the cost driver of the direct labor is the unit produced energy electricity for example uh, can be driven by the 
um, kilowatt hour we use for the electricity and also the cable usage the longer the cable will be the driver so we just have to identify which one is more appropriate as the cost driver there are four uh, methods we can use in estimating cost. The first one is industrial engineering method. This is a um, physical uh, term. So uh, engineers are usually using the relationship between input and output. So uh, it is uh, usually more consuming, but this is a, a very good method when we uh, calculate the or when we estimate cost for infrastructure contract for example yeah this is very important method actually conference method is the method to uh, estimate cost using information from many department of uh, a company yeah uh, account analysis method uh, this is more qualitative rather than quantitative, but we consider the variable cost, fixed cost, mixed cost, yeah, and we also consider the um, uh, activity or the cost driver of the costs, but usually this is qualitative, yeah. It is easy to use, but um, um, sometimes it's not uh, easy to do, uh, uh, sorry, um, Um, doing account analysis method actually needs uh, uh, a special expertise so uh, for it, it is not done using uh, technical or uh, statistical tools yeah uh, the Im uh, the important method that uh, is re related to us is the quantitative analysis so we are the accounting um, People usually use this uh, quantitative analysis. For this analysis, we use mathematical method and we use the uh, statistical tools as well. Yeah, and we have to uh, uh, requires we have to gather information about the cost, cost driver, cost function, and uh, every data related to uh, the uh, the condition. There are two math, uh, uh, alternatives here yeah, in doing quantitative analysis. The simplest one is uh, high-low method. Yeah, the, the other one is regression method. We will take a look at detail after this uh, part. Okay, so there are three, six steps yeah, in doing quantitative analysis. The first one is to choose the dependent variable or the cost that we are estimating. The second one is to... Um, find the activity or the cost driver and then we have to collect data and find the cost driver as well the data of the cost driver the data of the in the, the dependent variable and then we plot the data to the uh, relationship and then we estimate the costs the first method is high low method yeah. the high low method is uh, simple yeah but it is not uh, really accurate but we can uh, use high low method in uh, 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 um, a brief yeah is very simple so it's easy to do yeah so if we want to have a conclusion or decision in a short time is uh, we can use this one yeah all we need is the information about the highest and the lowest of the activity remember um, the lowest and highest base we use here is the activity so after finding the highest and the lowest activity then we find the cost of each of them yeah so the first step is to find the variable cost per unit or the slope of the function yeah the variable cost per unit is the highest uh, the difference between the highest and the lowest cost divided by the highest and lowest uh, activities yeah uh, then we find uh, 20 as the result so 20 dollar per unit is the variable cost per unit next step is to find the fixed cost fixed cost is the total cost minus the variable costs so if we put uh, this uh, function to one of uh, alternatives here let's say we use it to the highest one if we use to the highest activities so fixed cost is 2500 cost total cost uh, subtracted by 20 times the 100 uh, 
activities yeah 100 units of activities so the fixed cost is 500 dollar so then we can find the cost function as total cost is 500 plus 20 times the variable cost yeah oh sorry the driver Okay, the next method is regression analysis. For the regression analysis, we plot all of the data. So we use all of the data. Compared to the high-low method, we only use two uh, items, the highest and the lowest of activities. But by using regression analysis, we use all of the data. We use all of the information. We plot it in the data, and then using statistical tool, we can result. We can come up with the uh, cost function. So the uh, statistical machine uh, find here that the uh, total cost is 300.698 plus 10.31. Or, uh, uh, x yeah so uh, this is the cost function yeah that we got using the regression analysis one of the benefit using regression analysis is we consider all of the data so the function is more accurate rather than we use the high low method because high low method only use two points yeah but regression analysis using all of the data we have Okay, so uh, next, the cost driver and activity-based base costing is very related to each other. Yeah, it relate very strong to each other because uh, in activity-based costing, we estimate cost using uh, many cost pools. Yeah, so we from so many uh, costs the company have, we have to classify them into pools every pools then find its own cost driver yeah so cost driver is very important when we use activity based costing yeah uh, for activity based costing uh, the cost is pulled using or, or consider also the hierarchy but we will uh, learn about this one in the uh, in other uh, sub uh, section yeah because uh, if you can see here that the activity based costing uh, has its uh, level, unit level, batch level, product level, facility level, yeah, uh, different kind of cost, different pool, yeah. But we will uh, we will learn it in the other uh, subtopic. Okay. Uh, remember in the last uh, in the uh, first part I. Uh, told you that we use an assumption for a linear function we have two assumptions for linear function but for nonlinear function yeah we uh, forget about the the assumptions yeah for example for the linear function uh, we use a, a short term horizon but in the non nonlinear function we use long term horizon we use a relevant range, but in the nonlinear function, we do not use only one uh, relevant range, which, 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 uh, which is one capacity. So in nonlinear function, we use several kind of uh, several capacity. Yeah, uh, short run for the linear function, but not short run in the nonlinear function can be long run. And the variable cost per unit is then not constant in the nonlinear function because the horizon is very long so uh, variable cost per unit can be changing okay so uh, i think this is all for uh, 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 related to the top uh, to the uh, this topic yeah cost behavior i hope you enjoy the the lecture and i hope that it can uh, give you benefits in understanding about the cost behavior see you again I uh, hope you are success in your study. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.